why opera? What's your history with opera? How did you get into it? It's a very common story for people who love opera, but I always loved to sing. And I always thought that um, singing a story was like a very unique path to emotional truth. Um, and as I kind of grew up as a theater artist, I found my way back to opera, working with singers who view their work a little bit more athletically than actors do. And so when a director, I'm an opera director mostly, and when a director works with singers, they have a lot more um, to contribute, I think, because you're reminding them that this technical act they're doing, singing, is serving a story. What I love about opera is its epic scale, its wildness, its riskiness, um, and I love that it, it lies at the intersection of all the fine arts. The visual arts, music, theater, it can have dance in it. So it's really a catch-all, even though we, we sort of view it as a, or hear opera and we think, oh, it's an elitist word, it's a foreign word. Mm -hmm. What it actually can be for us is a, com a center of community um, and a place where all of the arts organizations in the community can meet. So it's a very collaborative, like, art. Yeah, in, in its nature, um, so in an opera rehearsal room, which I'm inviting you to and invite all of uh, the viewers to come witness an opera rehearsal because it's a really exciting event. Um, and in a way that we're talking about non-hierarchy in the arts and, and uh, space sharing and everybody having their own voice, you have in one corner a director who's sort of guiding the room and helping us tell the story and facilitating the communication of the text through music. And then in another part of the room, you have the conductor who's facilitating the music as another language. And then the singers are working to sort of parse um, information between the two languages and, and maybe a third language if it's not the language they speak and stage management, so it's, it's really like the maximal collaboration. And then of course, what you usually don't have during the process is the orchestra. And they join in the last two weeks and elevate the whole project to something beyond any one person's contribution. Wow, that's beautiful. It's really exciting, it's, a, it's like a big machine. So what about like, when you say you, like, you have this passion for the collaborativeness and the spreading, you know, the joy, do you like do anything within education or teaching? Because that kind of aligns a little bit, just like spreading that passion to others. Yeah, well, my personal mission is that I want to help people access their real selves. Um, and so I teach acting at Juilliard. I teach the opera singers how to act. Um, and um, I currently work with the masters um, in music and graduate diploma students. And I coach them um, in their repertoire, but I also work on monologues with them and scenes and arias and the shows we do there. And at Opera Saratoga, one of the parts of it that I'm most excited for is we have a program of festivals festival artists who are artists at the beginnings of their career who are given these opportunities to shine on the main stage and we let them lead us, we have them guide us in, in terms of how we can support their journey as artists. Um, of course with like my feedback, um, but I want people who, who have something to say and who know where they want to go and then I can, you know, help. Uh, hold that vision with them. Yeah, so you said like the artists are leading. You don't really see That's that very much with an institution. So what's the like plus of letting the artists lead and then you kind of support? Well, I just, so I just joined Opera Saratoga in March, but in my own work, what I have found is that when someone own, owns a choice or owns a vision, they are much more likely to um, carry it through and to take risk and to uh, be authentic at the end of the day and to, and to connect with an audience, really, truly, um, and, to, and to allow the audience to feel like they see themselves on stage because whatever the person has shared is so open and vulnerable. Yeah, and speaking of risk, I've spoken to some folks who work in orchestras, opera, symphony, choral music. I have, I, I've heard, the similar thought of like taking risk now, like being risky within this field or within this artistic craft is important so it can like kind of spread out and be accessible. Is that something that you kind of agree with or see? Oh my gosh, I so agree with that. I, I think it's interesting because I, I think a lot of people view accessibility and risk as totally different, mm -hmm. right? Like if something's too, too sort of edgy, will it be accessible? But I, I think that, you know, we find sport, sports are the most um, audience friendly events in America because you go into each event with a buy, with a buy in. Like, is this, per, is this team going to win or lose? You can tell I watch a lot of sports. <laughs> is this team going to win or lose? We don't go, when we go to the opera, we don't necessarily go with the same kind of question 
about the event. And I think that we all need to, in the live performing arts, embrace this idea of like, the question of the what will happen? Will we, you know, will they come out on top? Is it too big to fail? You know, that kind of thing is a real hook for audiences. And it can be the thing that allows them to like, get off their couches and stop streaming shows and join us in a space, um, you know, for a night of art making. So yes, I think yes to risk and also yes to inclusion and yes to bringing people into the opera who may never have been um, in a theater before and, and seeing what they make of it and also how they can connect it to stuff that they have experienced. Because I think the thing that is most commonly heard when people go to the opera for the first time is like, oh, I know what this is. Like I've heard this on TV, <laughs> yeah. I've heard this in soundtracks, you know, like I actually have way more experience than I thought, but the barrier to entry is so um, big. So how with this new position, as you were saying, how do you bring artists in? Like how do you make sure that they feel this collaborative feeling and they feel that they're accepted into like the, um, the art of opera? I plan the seasons, I program the seasons, I raise the money to, um, w along with a really wonderful staff, to have the seasons up um, in the summer in Saratoga. But we also are looking to expand to the uh, fall, winter, and spring to have offerings around the capital region. One of the things that we did that I thought was really lovely and we'll definitely do again next year this year and we'll see how it works i mean we're i'm really like beta testing this year for the f for the future is we handed out on day one a sheet of core values and these core values included things like mutual respect transparency joy boundaries and we invited the artists to tell us and and ask us questions and say you know if this day's schedule looks unfeasible um, for any reason, uh, they would connect with us and tell us like, no, we're not actually going to do that. Um, so we're just inviting them into the infrastructure and trying to be as transparent as possible with why decisions are made. Um, mm. I find that like, you know, as, as an artist, I don't know if you share this, I would like to hear whether you do, the, the question as a young artist is, am I good enough? Oh, I all think, the time. Right? Every day. <laughs> um, and, it's, and it's, I think, a pervasive one in our culture in general um, because there's so much competition and the nature of capitalism and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but, um, but for artists, younger artists, I find that um, they're always thinking, do these people think that I'm good enough? Mm. And what I want to pass on to them is that that is not even part of the conversation. Like you're exactly. valuable because you're here and we're having a conversation together so that the audience feels that acceptance in the space when they walk in. What kind of things does, does Opera Saratoga have coming up? Any events? So, yes, thank you so much for asking. <laughs> so we have a summer festival. We start our children's show, which is really actually a very sophisticated children's offering. It's a 45 minute free opera that we're offering all around Saratoga Springs and one, in, one performance in Schenectady on the 11th called The Selfish Giant, female composer, female librettist, female director. And then we have two main stages um, at UPH, Universal Preservation Hall in downtown Saratoga Springs happening um, between June 29 and July 9. Uh, a Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder, the Broadway hit, mm -hmm. and um, Don Pasquale, which is a, an opera buffa a comic opera um, from the 1800s that is by Donizetti. So both are really fun pieces. They're very like charming and actor driven and um, subversive in their own ways. Each one of them is about resource sharing amongst a generation who doesn't have it. Oh, perfect so there's, yeah, for us, perfect for us, really. 2023. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I think that, um, and then, and then uh, you can check out our website for way more concerts and recital offerings um, along this, in this festival period in all of June. Awesome. Um, but I'm so excited to welcome you there. I hope you come. I will definitely shows. 100% show up. Well, okay. thank you, Mary. I'm super excited to visit Opera Saratoga and it was great to speak to you. Thank you so much, thank Jade. You. Thanks for having me. <laughs>